Hello, welcome back. Uh, so we're still working on the same exercise. Uh, the first video we did part A and part B, uh, looking at the range and the interquartile range. Uh, one of the things that you may have noticed about these two measures of spread uh, and variability within a data set is that they really only use a limited amount of the data. When we looked at the range, we only looked at uh, the smallest value and the largest value. Uh, when we looked at the interquartile range, we only looked at uh, just these values, the, the first quartile and the third quartile, and the difference between uh, between those two. So it really uses a, a very limited amount of the information that is contained within that data set. So another um, more commonly used measure or commonly used metric of variability in a data set is the variance. <clears throat> and this is the one that we're going to compute here. Now, d depending on the size of your sample, the size of your data set, this can be a little bit long and tedious to calculate. The formula that we're going to use, uh, we're going to calculate the sample variance because I have here just a sample data uh, data set. So the notation for that is S squared. And the variance, we've seen this notation before. This is the sum of. And here we're looking at these differences between individual observations and the sample mean, which we have given to us right here. This is our x bar. So we're calculating all of these differences between each observation and the mean. So 37, <coughs> excuse me, 37 minus 63.5, 47 minus 63.5, 60 minus 63.5, so on and so forth. <coughs> we're going to calculate each of those differences, then we're going to square it. And we're doing that across all observations, so i equals 1 through n. So this is observation 1, 2, 3, so on down to this last one is observation n, which is our sample size, uh, n equals 8 in this case. And then finally we divide this by n minus 1. So the, the tedious part of this, um, of this calculation really is that numerator. So what I'm going to do, we'll, we'll do all of these um, calculations you know, one step at a time. I'm going to first calculate here. I'm just going to put a label. I'm going to do a row of calculations, sorry, a column of calculations. So I'm going to write out each of these differences and, and square them. So this first one will be 37 minus this mean here, 63.5 squared. The next one will be 47 minus 63.5 squared. And we're going to go all the way through until the very last one, which will be 91 minus 63.5 squared. So I'm going to go through all of those eight differences. I'm going to square them individually. And then we're going to add all of those together. And right in that square rectangle uh, will be the numerator of this formula. So this calculation I'm about to do will give us this numerator in this formula. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to pull out the calculator and I'll start off. So the first one is the first observation, so 37 minus 63.5. So that's the difference. And now I'm going to square that and I have 702.25. Whoops. So that was 702.25. Now the next one. So now we go, our next observation is 47 minus 63.5. And I square that, 272.25. And we carry on, only six more to go. Next one is 60. So that's 12 and a quarter. Oh, another one. Oh, the next one is 60 as well. So that one will be the same, 12.25. So here now I'm at this observation here. So this is going to be 63 
minus 63.5 squared, so that's one quarter. And now 70. 42 and a quarter. 80. Oops. Oops. Okay, try that one again. Uh, 80 minus 63.5. Square that. 272 and a quarter. And one more. 91. 756 and a quarter. Okay, so there we have all of those differences squared. So what we have here is really just the column, all of these pieces here. Now we have to add them up. So now we have to apply this piece of notation. So we're going to add all of these up uh, going down the column. So this is going to be, let's start at the top, 702.25 plus 272 plus 12 plus. So there's our numerator, 2070. So we now have 2070 divided by, this is eight minus one, so that will be seven. So now let's divide this by seven. And there's my variance, 295.7, 295.7, 295 there we go, done. So now this, this is a measure of the total variation within that data set. Now, on its own, it can be sort of difficult to interpret what does this number mean. On its own, it's kind of hard to, to really get anything out of it, other than to say a larger number is a greater amount of variability, a smaller number is less variability or less variation within that data set. Another thing that's um, a little bit tedious with the variance is its units are often confusing or are often of relatively little value because here we're looking at our data. This is in percentage, uh, percentage points, right? I, I can look at the mean over here and this is 63.5%, right? That has an, a unit that is easily understood. This uh, variance is 295.7% squared. Uh, good luck trying to really tell you know tell anybody what the heck that means. So to overcome that aspect of it, the fact that it's measured in in the units squared, another useful measure of the spread or the variability within a data set uh, is this one. Uh, what we're going to do in part D. And this is the standard deviation. Now, once we have the variance, the standard deviation is actually very simple to calculate because the standard deviation, the notation is S for the sample standard deviation. And wouldn't you know it, we had just calculated the variance, which is S squared. So in order to get the standard deviation, well, this is just the square root of the variance. Uh, so it's really just that simple. Once you've got the variance, the standard deviation uh, is, is significantly easier to, to obtain. So I can just take the square root of this, and now I have a standard deviation of 17 point, let's round that to 17.2. So this is then 17.2. I'll just write that in over here. So now, again, 
the larger the standard deviation, the greater amount of variability there is in that data set. The smaller the standard deviation, the, the more compact it is. And by that I mean, you know, if it's compact, it means the observations are more tightly packed around the mean, as opposed to something with high variation or large standard deviation would imply that the individual observations in the data set are, are much more spread apart uh, from the mean. So here we have a standard deviation, 7.2. The units of measurement now are going to be exactly the same as the units of measurement of your data. So I w we don't normally put a unit of measure on the standard deviation. You can, depending on circumstance and depending on the particular um, task at hand, that you know, particular um, circumstances that you're that you're working within. But normally, we would just state it as as a number. So what this means is the standard deviation is 17.2. And again, it, on its own, difficult to really extract much from it. It's helpful for comparing across data sets so we can see that this, maybe I'm looking at, this is my macroeconomics class, maybe I'm gonna compare this against my microeconomics class or my statistics class or something else. So I can compare which class has the greater amount of variation or the higher variability in grades. Okay, now <clears throat> the next one, uh, the coefficient of variation, this one as well stems from this initial calculation. So once we've got the variance, we can easily get the standard deviation, which is here, and the coefficient of variation, I don't have a symbol for it, I'll just call it the coef uh, variation. This is the standard deviation divided by uh, the sample mean. And this, uh, we times this by 100, and now this we can say is a percent. So the coefficient of variation tells us the standard deviation as a percent of the mean. So in this exercise, with the data that we've been working with, uh, I'm running out of colors here, my coefficient of variation will be, <coughs> Seventeen point two. I'm just so I'm I'm leaving that that calculation in the calculator. That was my standard deviation, about seventeen point two. Divide that by my mean, which we have is sixty three point five, and that gives me a coefficient of variation of point two seven times one hundred, and that will be twenty seven percent. So my standard deviation is 27% of my mean. Again, on its own, doesn't convey a great deal of information. Uh, this measure is most useful, again, when you're comparing across data sets. Specifically, if you're trying to compare the degree of dispersion or variation between data sets that are measured in very different units. So if you're, if you're looking at um, comparing somebody's weight to their height. So if we measure uh, weight in pounds, that's one unit of measurement, and in height, we could measure, measure height in inches or in feet or in meters. Uh, all of those different units of measurement can have an impact on the magnitude of the standard deviation and the magnitude of the mean. And so that makes comparisons between those different metrics difficult to do accurately. So the coefficient of variation uh, helps sort of scale the values uh, and puts them in perspective uh, of their respective means so that they're more easily compared between different types of data. Okay, so that about sums it up for uh, the last part of this problem. Uh, so I think we'll call it um, we'll call it a day, uh, and uh, I look forward to seeing you again, or at least uh, looking at this video camera again uh, for another set of videos. Thanks for watching.